I largely agree with what Andy said that religious freedom is the canary in the coal mine. Uh, but if I want to take a broader, more comparative approach to answer your question, what I'm actually reminded of is Pakistan. Like Pakistan, Turkey is a country with remarkably little self-confidence and a leadership with little interest in democracy, which often uses religion to subordinate those with different cultural identities. Um, if everyone professes the same sort of radical Islamist identities, for example, then it doesn't matter if you're a, a Kurd or a Turk and you don't have to address those, those difficult issues which have been at play in Turkey for almost uh, a century, if not more. And of course, the Christians will get caught uh, in this as well as with the Yazidis and other religious minorities. Um, but the issue isn't simply internal. Some diplomats, and we see this at the State Department, might actually believe well, this is an internal matter. We have much more important things to do with Turkey. They're a member of NATO. We, they're a key to stability in the Middle East. They can dump refugees into Germany or activate terror cells there. What, what we need to look at is actually, again, using the Pakistan example, the long-term implications of doing nothing. So for example, um, we see ethnic cleansing in Syria, we see ethnic cleansing in Nagorno-Karabakh, as Aram had mentioned, and as I saw with um, first firsthand when I went in November, and we see the same sort of pattern elsewhere. What happens in Turkey doesn't stay in Turkey, and if Erdogan is allowed to eradicate the last remaining Christian communities, to steal Christian property, to interfere in uh, the religious hierarchy, that's something we can expect to see outside of Turkey's borders as well. The other pattern, and I'll end here, is that by empowering Islamist militias, it's very hard to put that back in the box. And so we've seen this consistently with Pakistan um, empowering Taliban groups. We saw this first with Hafez al-Assad, and then if you remember, before the Syrian civil war with Bashar al-Assad as well, thinking that he could use these sorts of um, Islamist militant groups against his eternal enemies to wage jihad, we see this. Uh, we saw this with Saudi Arabia uh, up until around 2003, 2004, until they experienced blowback. Number one, it's inevitable that Turkey will experience blowback. Ultimately, these Islamist radicals, which have been deployed uh, against Armenia, which have been deployed in Syria, deployed into Libya, they're going to come back and look at Turkey. It's happened everywhere else. But as a security perspective, we need to realize that this is going to come on our radar screen and the State Department, some in Congress, some in the Turkey lobby are foolish if they think that we can simply ignore this and eventually just with good hopes and good wishes and fingers crossed, Turkey's gonna go back to the status quo ante, which as all historians know, wasn't that much of a, um, a, a positive element in the region to start with. Thank you. <laughs>